We're going to be better today than we were yesterday. And for today's video, pretty much I'm going to be having my teammate, his name is William, and he's on the floor right here at UTRGV, and pretty much he's going to tell you his awesome story on how he got to the point where he is, where he has a full right scholarship at a Division I school. Hey guys, what's up? It's William Macchio. I'm a forward for UTRGV Soccer, and this is my story. So, you know, it all started when I was a young boy. I was actually 12 years old when I started playing soccer, and before that, I, I, was, uh, I was in love with hockey. Me and my brothers, we always used to play hockey. It was something that we, want, like we really wanted, and I actually wanted to go pro as a hockey player, living in Canada. And, you know, I played hockey for a while, and one day, I was actually driving home with my dad from Walmart and I seen a I seen a advertisement board and it was it was to join a recreational soccer league. It was actually called Northside Soccer and that's the very first club I played for. So I went to the tryouts and I was I was terrified. 12 year old boy, I was terrified, didn't really didn't really know how to play competitive soccer, recreational soccer. I'd always used to just kick the ball around to my brothers in the backyard. And I show up to the tryout and you know, there's kids, they got shin pads on, they're wearing proper cleats and everything. And I showed up in jeans and some boots just cause I, I didn't know, I didn't know what I needed to, uh, to wear. So I showed up and everyone was looking at me, everyone was looking at my dad like, this kid, what is he wearing? Does he like, is he, is he supposed to be here? And it was funny, but once the tryout actually started, it was, the second I touched the ball, I just ran with the ball. I just started shooting and scoring. I didn't even pass the ball, guys. Like I was just, I was just in the moment, and that's when I knew I had a feeling. I was like, soccer is the sport for me. And from that day on, I just, I just been given 110 percent to get where I am today. When I started playing, I was playing U12, and after the first season of playing U12, I jumped up to the U14s. Uh, still being 12 years old. And then once I got to age 14, I jumped up to the U16s. Pretty much after my youth, I had zero offers for colleges, guys. There was nobody that wanted me. And yeah, I kind of felt a little bit discouraged, but that just made me stay home and, you know, stay at home and apply for all the local colleges at home. So SAIT ended up uh, um, offering me to come to tryouts and see how I do. So when I went to tryouts for SAIT, it was... I was kind of intimidated, but at the same time, I, I felt I felt very excited and very ready because they were the only school that you know were able to give me an option, and I just wanted to give them my everything. So I showed up to tryouts. We just had a few games and a little bit of fitness testing. I did very well in the fitness testing, and we went on to the games. And after we played the after we played the games, the coach actually came up to me, pulled me aside from everyone, and he looked at me and he's just like, "William, like you're on the team. You don't even have to come back." Uh, for the rest of the trials and I was in my head I was just thinking like is this is this is this real like and I was just super excited and he was just telling me that you know you have raw talent you work very hard you know you don't give up and that's one thing I just seen from you just watching you play running all over the place and guys that just got me super excited that for me was like reassurance that I'm a good player and I can take the sport further so after the tryouts we had individual individual training sessions with players and the coaches and this is where, you know, Coach Grant, he really helped me excel in my game. I was, a, I was a forward that really, that didn't really know the tactic side of the game. I would just kick the ball down the line and run, kick the ball down the line and run, cross it in or look for a shot. And he really broke down my game. So he showed me how to strike the ball properly with the laces of my foot, the side of my foot, control the ball with the outside of my foot. And those are little things as a forward that are super important that I had no idea how to. So I'm very grateful for that. So, you know, preseason comes along. We have a great preseason. Uh, I love all my players. Everything was going very well. And, you know, they were treating me, I, I was a freshman, but, you know, they were treating me like a senior at that point. And I just showed so much love, and I was just very happy for that. So, you know, the season starts, and our first game, I got, I scored my very first goal. I got subbed on in the 75th minute, and, you know, Grant pulled me aside. He's like, you're going to go in, debut, just have fun, don't think too much, and just score a goal. That's exa those are the exact words he told to me. And he winked at me as I'm waiting at the half full line to get subbed in. So I get subbed in, first touch on the ball, I get smashed. 
and I'm just I'm just looking around. I'm not focusing on the game. My head's all over the place. And then the second, my second touch of the ball, I get smashed again. And it just kept on getting smashed, kept on getting smashed. And I was feeling really discouraged and stuff. But my players, the senior players, they were always looking out for me and they just told me, well, just play your game, play your game. Don't worry about, don't worry about the defender. Don't worry about your bad touches. Don't worry about anything. Just play your game. And you know, one of the last plays in the game, I get the ball on my left side. I drop my shoulder, beat the defender run down the line, beat another defender, and I just hit it with my left across the body. And the ball literally just trickled un under the goalkeeper's hands into the bottom corner. And I just felt so much release in my body. I was like, wow, I scored my first college goal. So for my celebration, my, my main celebration, I did my backflip and everyone ran around me and I just felt so loved, guys. And that was just for me. I just felt super happy. And I just knew that this, this sport, I was gonna take it as far as I can and I wasn't gonna worry about anything that came my way. Whenever I, I never wanted to feel discouraged. I didn't care if coaches, you know, didn't like me. I didn't care if players didn't like me. I love the game. And that's what I want you guys to think of the game like if you guys wanna bring it up to the next level. So after the, my very first season, my accolades, I won player of the year, rookie of the year, all conference player, top 11, and top goal scorer for rookie. So we move on to my second season, and you know, I had a very good second season, same type of uh, accolades I received. And this for me, this is when I kind of knew that I needed something else. But the, the level of my college, it was nowhere near the NCAA level. It was literally the, the fourth division compared to NCAA because you have my level of college, ACAC, and then you have CIS, and then you have NCAA D3, D2, and then D1 where I am at now. So that, that was a big jump for me, uh, me wanting to go to a better school, me wanting to go to a better team, play with better players. It was, it was tough because I didn't really have the connections, I didn't really have the support at that time, but I knew for me it was time It was time to get ready, it was time to change, and it was time to push for more. So after my second year was done, I actually applied for, at this time it was called PDL, USL PDL. And this, this was a very rough time for me guys. The USL PDL was, I felt like it, it was a curse to me. I tried out my very first year, um, I didn't even get looked at. Like after the first, after the first uh, tryout, I didn't even get looked at. He told me, you're not good enough to play on this team. And it was tough. I went home, you know, I was crying and I was like very sad. I didn't want to come back for, um, I didn't want to come back to the community college and play a whole four years there. I played men's league and I just wanted to stay fit and, you know, keep my shape. And the next season comes around, you know, guys, I did this for a whole year. Like I was just, I just grinded literally for a whole year and just worked on my own game. Whether that's outside with my friends, outside my brothers for two, three hours a night until they get mad and they want to go inside and I'm still out there working because I got cut after the first day of trials. And you know, I just felt very discouraged. I didn't even, I, I felt like I wasn't even good enough for football anymore. So I come around the second season and I make it to the, uh, after the first set of tryouts, I make it to the second. And the second set of trials is the game. So we play the game. I actually scored a goal in the game. And you know, for me inside, I felt like I had it. I felt like I made it to the third and final cuts of the traveling. You get to travel with the team, the first team, and you get to travel out and play universities in Canada. So I get the, I get the call that I didn't make it. And for me, it was very, it, I, couldn't, I couldn't sleep for a couple of days. I kind of had no idea what to do in terms of soccer, in terms of progressing, because how, how was I supposed to get here? How was I supposed to get to a bigger school? How was I supposed to get in front of bigger coaches, pro coaches, if I can't even make a PDL team, a USL PDL team, right? I just kept on training, kept on training, and I told myself, you know what? I'm gonna show up to, I'm gonna show up to the next, I'm gonna show up to the practice, the first practice of the PDL season. I'm gonna just show up and see what happens. And I showed up in just some random shorts, shirt, my cleats, and everybody was looking at me like, this guy got cut, this guy got cut. 
and I went straight to the coach and I was just like, you know, can I, can I train? I want to train, can I train? And he let me train, guys. He let me train and he said, you know, I'm not really going to offer you anything. You can come train. If I like you, we can talk more about it and see how it goes. He let me train, guys, for one month before the season started. And in that one month, it was tough. Players would just make fun of me, you know, they never thought I was good enough. They would yell at me when I'll put in a hard challenge. I'm trying to prove myself. They would get mad at me because the starting 11 didn't want to get injured. You know, they didn't want a little kid coming in and ruining their practice. And you know, it was tough. Uh, it was really, I was really sad. I, really, I didn't really have friends at that time. Um, I only had a couple boys that really liked me and it, I didn't really, I didn't really feel welcomed. So I did that first month there. Um, didn't even didn't end up getting signed, but they still kept me around for practice. So I knew for me that was a sign. If they're still gonna keep me around to prove myself, but even though I'm not on the team, I don't have the benefits, that for me was okay. That for me was totally okay. So the second month comes in, we're still training, and I'm, I'm still not getting time, even in practice. I'm just sitting there watching the drills. I would get in once in a while. And a time like this, guys, you feel, you feel worthless, you feel like nothing. And I want to tell you guys, if you guys are in a situation like that, just keep working hard. Coaches love it when you prove them wrong. And that was my mentality. I want to prove this guy wrong. And after the second month is over, I, I played in a couple little scrimmages against some small universities. I would always score. I would always score. And I worked so hard. I would run the most in the game. And I just had this, I just had this line mentality of me. And he ended up signing me at the end of the second month, a little bit into the season. Ended up signing me. And guys, that was the greatest feeling ever. That just to me proved to me that I can do anything. You know, I can make any team I want as long as I work hard and I stay focused. So guys, as soon as I make the team, I get my gear, you know, I'm ecstatic. But the, the only problem was the, the distance of these trainings. It was 45 minutes away from my house, sometimes an hour. And my dad was working out, out of the city. So I had to take the bus, I had to train, I had to walk, whatever it was, an hour and a half, two hours. I had to fetch rides. I'm sure people were sick of me asking for rides, but I wasn't gonna let uh, transportation ruin my dreams, ruin my goals, no way. I was gonna find a way to get there because I wanted it that bad. We start the season, we're probably one thirds into the season. I get signed and you know, I actually, it was a blessing from God. I, I was one of three, three forwards. So I would travel every single travel week. I would travel and that for me was like, that was amazing. I didn't really, I didn't mind if I didn't play. I knew my position on the team. And this is what people, some people gotta understand. If you make a team, it doesn't mean you're playing 90 minutes. It doesn't mean you're playing five minutes, you know? But you just gotta do what you gotta do. So I was, my role, I just make sure everything was good. I make sure everyone had waters and stuff like that. And I would just try to prove to coach that I want this just as bad as everyone here, even more. So my coach actually brought me in one practice and you know, he, he told me how much he loved my attitude, my work ethic, you know, I never got brought down. And that's something about me that, you know, I, I have pride in myself, you know, and if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it 100% and I don't care what you think because I'm gonna get it. And, and that was just my mentality and I was just, I was so respectful, whatever he did to me, you know, he didn't play me, he didn't play me the whole first season, he didn't play me, I sat on the bench, and you know, I just, I was happy, I was happy just to wear the, just to wear the kit, guys, and that just, that for me, that for me meant a lot, just to be part of the team. So, you know, we get on to the second season, and the second season was quite similar, I didn't get to play a lot, and at this point, I was like, I was feeling really sad, because I just, I wanted to play, but you know, I would show myself in trainings, I would work hard in trainings, I would do the extra fitness and trainings, and I'll just keep wanting to show code. And he would always tell me, keep working, keep working, keep, keep proving it to me, keep proving it to me. I was proving it to him. And at one point I thought that he was just, you know, he really just didn't care. And he was just using me just to have numbers at 24 in a squad. But yeah, he didn't, he didn't play me. It was tough. Uh, you know, I, I kind of wanted to quit at one point. I wanted to stop and just be like, you know, I'm just gonna go back to my college and take things easy and you know, just write it out. But I didn't quit, you know, all my best friends, my brothers, my family, they just said keep working, don't don't quit. You'll see, you know. During the end of the season, um, we had a home game against uh, Seattle and coach put me on. He put me on this like 70th minute, it was tie game. One of my friends, uh, Tofa gets tackled out the wing and 
It's a free kick and it's like 80, 80 something minute. It's a free kick. And my one of my my other teammate Jonesy whips the ball in. And I just jump up. The net's behind me. I have just have no idea. And I just jump up and I flick the flick the ball with the back of my head. And I score the game winning goal for us. Uh, I think it was to go to playoffs and I was just like, oh my goodness. Everybody was screaming, all the fans. There was at least like 800 people watching. All the fans were there. And it was just like, a, I put my mark and it felt so good to score that goal at home. My old coaches, everyone was watching that game and they just seen that hard work. All that hard work led down to that moment, that one goal that I scored. And that was the biggest change for me. That's when I changed as a player. That's, I brought it up to the next level. That was a different caliber for me after that goal. It, it, it's, it's little moments like that, guys, where you know you feel so good and you throw back everything, all of the hard work, all the dirt you went through, you throw all that back because you're moving on to the next level. And that's how it felt like for me. So that was about the end of the second season for me with the PDL team. And I was happy because I knew I was gonna come back next season stronger and ready than ever. So now we come on to the third season, guys, and I feel completely different in my game. I, I feel completely different in my style and I'm ready to, and I'm ready to go. I didn't really get to play much in the beginning of the season, but as I went on into the end of the season, one day coach brought me aside and he said, you're gonna play in the semifinal match. You're gonna play in the semifinal match. Uh, one of our strikers is injured, our other forward is injured, and he told me, you know, you're gonna play in this match, you're ready to play. And I, like, I didn't play very much in the, in, the, in the regular season, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes here and there. And I was like, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to play. And this game was the best game of my entire life, guys. This game was the best game of my life. I played 90 whole minutes. From the second, I, the, from the second that game started, I, I knew I'm scoring, I'm doing whatever. We're winning this, we're winning this championship. It was a Western, Conference, a Western Conference final in the PDL to go into the national semifinal. Right into the game, I'm running all over the place. I'm tackling. My energy is absolutely insane and that's motivating everyone around me. I, all my senior players, they're looking at me and they're like, wow, like, you know, like keep working well, keep working, you're doing well, you're doing well. They're encouraging me, and I love that so much from them. So I scored my first goal. Ball comes in, whipped in from the top, from the center back, and I put it top corner, and I do my backup celebration. I scored that first goal, guys, I felt so happy. We're up, I brought my team up 1-0. <laughs> it was crazy. And then the second, second play, I take a defender down the wing, whipped across, uh, whipped the ball in, ball on the floor. My teammate Ali puts a top corner, that's two. And at this moment, I knew the game's over and I helped my team win this game. I, I went on to almost score my third goal and a fourth goal and I was just ecstatic that whole game and I was, I was working super hard. And we come into the change room after the game, we're all celebrating, Western Conference final. I won MVP of that game. And you know, that for me was just assurance that I'm gonna take the sport to the next level and I know I will. So we actually go on, win the semifinals and we actually win the finals of the PDL. And that for me was just super, a lot of weight off my shoulders, guys. That for me was just a lot of hard work. Those three years playing in this league was a lot of work. I felt like they abandoned me or they disrespected me, but you know what it did? It made me stronger. It made me who I am today. And having that championship just means so much to me. And you know, no one can ever take that away from me. So the weeks go on, guys. And you know, I was always talking to myself. I was like, oh, season's over. What do I got? What do I have now? And I was gonna stay. There was a new CPL. I uh, was building up and you know, I was gonna be, I was gonna, my team that we won the championship was just gonna move up to the professional team in the CPL. And you know, I was happy for that. They were gonna give me an opportunity to play for them and stuff. But you know, I'd always had a dream to go into the States and play in the NCAA, hopefully push for MLS one day in Europe and so forth. So I had a dream one night and it was, I had an offer to an NCAA Division One school. I, and that's, that's all my dream was, is you have an offer on paper. And you know, I woke up and that's, I knew that that's something that I really wanted, even though that I had the whole setup with the new CPL league that was, you know, forming in 2019. 
it was coming into place. They were going to give me an opportunity to play for the CPL and try out preseason and whatever. But who knows, I might have not, I might have not played that much because I know they're going to ship players from Europe and everything. You know, I was a young player, so I don't know if I was going to play a lot. And I wanted to play. I wanted to keep playing. That was my most important thing is to play no matter what. Just keep playing no matter what level, no matter where you're at. Just make sure you're playing. Make sure you're working hard. So I wake up one day and I, I seen a message on my phone. And it was, it was coach. And he said, you know, I'd like to talk to you. I've talked to your goalkeeper, Marco Carducci. I thank him for this too. And, you know, they talked to him a little bit about me. They watched my game in the Western Conference semifinal. My best game ever I played. And he said that he wanted to give me an offer, guys. A full ride offer. And I couldn't even believe it. Uh, I just looked at that message for a week. I thought it was fake. <laughs> and, you know, I broke down crying. Like, for me, it was a lot. Like, I get to go to school for free. I get to do four years of academics for free. And I get to play at the best level in, in college in America for free. And they take care of me, guys. And that, for me, was like, that touched me in my heart a lot. Because, you know, I get to be the first person in my family that gets to get a degree. I get to be the first person in my family that gets, you know, move to America and live his, and live his dream. And um, it was a lot for me. I showed my parents. They didn't really know, um, like, what to do or how to go about it. But, you know, it was huge. I ended up taking the deal, guys. And had an amazing first year with this team. Everything, the, the second I came here, everything was just amazing. It was exactly what I wanted. I had an amazing first year, amazing second year, almost won the championships. We came close, lost in semifinals. And, uh, you know, now today I'm a captain of the UTRGV soccer, guys. And it's, it's, it's big from where I started and where I came from. And I'm just super blessed for everyone that's helped me out through the way. And I just hope that you guys can just, you know, look at the story and, you know, just don't give up on your dreams and just keep working hard no matter what because you're going to go through dirt but it's what you make out of it guys thank you